Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Heronbrook Farm. It is fantastic to have you here, as always. We're going to do something a little bit different today. I've had an awful lot of questions from people about our rainwater harvesting system. So this is our main barn behind me. Um, it's not connected to the water supply, the main supply at all. All of the water we use in here for all of the sheep, all of the washing, all of the workshops and everything, all comes from our rainwater harvesting system. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you a quick whistle stop tour of how that works and show you all the tanks and all of that sort of thing and explain to you the system. So let's get inside and uh, I'll show you the main bits. Okay, so let's start in the lambing area, which is situated right in the middle of the barn. Okay, so in here, as you know, because Jackie's already showed you, we've got a normal, well, quite big kitchen sink and we've got the washing machine. And also here is the hot water boiler because there's no hot water in the barn other than that boiler. Um, just a normal tap, really. We turn it on. There's a slight delay because it uses an electric pump to pump the water around the system. But just to show you, it's still really clear because of the way that we have designed the system. You really don't get any bits or anything. Now, I'm not saying I would drink this water. It is possible to put a filter system in line so that you actually can drink water that you rainwater harvest, but we only use it for the animals uh, and for cleaning the vehicles and all of that sort of thing. Uh, also in here, uh, is the washing machine, which Jackie uses for cleaning the lambing towels, the dog's beds, anything that's, that's mucky and dirty gets washed here, and that just uses cold water, so that's fantastic. And it's all plumbed in underneath here, just using normal 15 mil copper. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go outside to the backyard, uh, and I will show you there where the tanks are and how those are all connected together. Wow, beautiful day, really hot sun. Uh, spring has finally arrived. It's Easter Saturday, uh, 2020. So we're still in lockdown because of the coronavirus, but lambing is still going on. So here we are in the backyard. Um, and if you look over here, we've got one of the main big tanks. So this is a 6,000 litre uh, Endura tank. And I'll put a link to Endura tank. Absolutely fantastic. They make tanks of literally every possible size and shape. Um, we've got two Two of these, if you come this way, there's another one over here, hidden behind the digger. And this one is exactly the same, uh, another 6,000 litre Endura tank. So if we go back to the first one, and we just go around the side here. So you can see um, up above a normal gutter. Obviously it's a quite a big gutter, it's a four inch gutter. Um, and that runs the whole length of the building. And we've got another one on the other side that goes into the tank on the other side. That's connected to a downpipe here. Um, and that downpipe goes into this clever device that you can see here, which is a rainwater diverter. And so basically what happens is when it rains, the rain flows off the roof into the gutter, down the gutter, down the downpipe, and it hits this unit here. And when it hits this unit here, uh, if you come in closer, you can see it hits this filter, which filters out the worst of any debris. Um, and it then hits the bottom of here, which diverts the water down this pipe and into the tank. Um, if the tank is too full, all that happens is the excess water carries on down the downpipe, it comes out of the bottom here, and the gravel that I'm standing on here is basically a, a huge soak away. We dug this out to two metres deep and put a load of stone in and drainage in when we were building the barn. Okay, so back round the front. Let's have a look inside the big tank. So there's a huge man-sized lid on the top. And if we look down inside there, I don't know how well you can see, we're actually quite full. We have had to top it up this year. Quite echoey in there. Um, not a lot to see, it's a big tank. 
Okay, so the main big tank is there for storage, and you can see that there are two valves coming out at the bottom. Um, they're both quite substantial valves, but we've got them bored down to much smaller hoses. The important one is this one here, uh, which is a pipe covered in insulation to stop it freezing. And you'll see that this one runs up from here and into the side of this tank here, which is a 500 litre tank, is the tank from which we pump the water out. So if we just take a look inside, So I don't know if you can see in there, but there's a ball valve. And what that does is once this 500 litre tank is full, um, the ball valve closes and that stops all of the water from the big tank flowing out. So we always have 500 litres in here, assuming that the level in the big tank is above the level of uh, the pipe here. And if we go back inside, probably going to be quite hard to see, but right down at the bottom of that tank is the electric pump uh, and it's uh, an electric pump that is designed specifically for rainwater harvesting systems um, and it's wired in here now obviously you've got um, an electrical supply going into water which is quite a dangerous thing so that would be the one bit of the system I would absolutely recommend you get a plumber in to connect for you because if you electrify the water uh, then you really could kill yourself or someone else which would not not be great so what happens with that pump, it is specially designed to detect a drop in pressure in the pipe system. When it does that, it turns on and it sends water shooting up the pipe inside, which then comes out here, um, comes down to the hose pipe here, um, and it also shoots along here and behind the main tank and into the barn. And in fact, it goes right to the front of the barn through Lamming Central for the sink, and then right to the front where we've got another hose and our boot wash. So just to show you how this works, we've got a hose here. Um, I'm going to turn the water on. You'll see it's actually not bad pressure. And you can hear the pump on there. And if you look that way, you can see just what sort of pressure we're achieving just with that pump. So pretty impressive, plenty of pressure, actually better than mains pressure. The final point to note is all of these tanks are black and the reason that they're black is why the water is so clear. Um, having a black tank means the sunlight can't get into the water, which means that any algae in the water, which obviously you're going to get from it washing down off the roof, uh, can't develop and therefore it keeps the water clear. If we go over to the other side, it's a very similar setup. And again, we've got two valves coming out of the bottom of this tank. Um, one of them, you might be able to just see behind me through the gap there, feeds the trough in the field. And the other one, which you can see just disappearing into the wall there, gravity feeds two auto waterers that we've got in the main pen for the use, which I'll show you if we go back in here. So you can see just the last few ewes waiting to lamb. The slightly crazy purple thing on the wall there is an auto waterer. So just for gravity, that fills up with water and uh, we don't have to do anything and the ewes can drink as much as they want whenever they want. Okay, let's go back to the front. We've got another tap here, again with a frost tap on in case we need it. And that is more or less permanently connected to our boot wash which um, is an awesome bit of kit, comes from Switzerland, and you literally scrub away, as you can see, and give your boots a damn good clean, which given that we're farmers is fantastic. So that's the rainwater harvesting system. I hope you enjoyed this quick canter through how it works. Um, I will put links to all of the different suppliers. Endura Tank are awesome. Uh, there's a company in the Forest of Dean called Smiths of the Forest of Dean who are absolutely legendary for all of the little bits and pieces you need to connect the different parts together. Um, and they're absolutely fantastic on the phone. You can ring them up if you know nothing, which I did when I started this, and they will explain to you what all the different fittings are. So then just to say, how efficient is it? How much water are we actually able to collect? As you've seen down at the bottom, we're able to store 12,500 litres at any given moment in time. And we don't actually use a huge amount of water unless we're lambing. I've done a spreadsheet and I'll put a link to that in the description below so you can take a look. Um, but for our system, our building here is 85 foot long by 50 foot wide. 
and that means that our roof is 394 square meters. Um, I assume that you waste 50%. Some of it doesn't quite make it into the gutter, some of it runs off, some of it doesn't make it into the catcher. So if you assume therefore that 197 square meters is actually uh, catching, um, here in Derbyshire, in an average January, we have 79 millimetres of rain, um, and that equates to just over 15,000 litres of water harvested. So just in the month of January, we're able to harvest more water than we can actually store in the system. And across the whole year, and these are figures from the Met Office, which you can get for your own area, um, we can actually harvest 171,000 litres, which clearly we don't use. But otherwise it would be going to waste, it's absolutely free. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. It was a very quick canter through. Um, it's, it looks like quite a complicated system, but actually it's, it's very, very straightforward. If you've enjoyed the video, do hit like, leave us some comments, ask us some questions. We always reply to questions and do subscribe to the channel. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Easter and we'll see you on the next one.